Howdy ho there friends and neighbors, Bobby here this evening. Hey folks, tonight I'm going to show you how to use this brake lathe I have here. It's an AccuTurn 8922. It's an older brake lathe, but it actually still works pretty good. And I'm going to show you some of the basics of how to operate this thing, and then we'll proceed with machining a rotor. Okay friends, first of all on this unit here, I want to show you where the power switch is. It's actually over here on the right side of the brake lathe. And if you'll notice right here, if you flip the switch this way, it says rotor. If you flip it that way, it says drum. Uh, tonight, we will be operating it on the rotor function. So when you turn it on, we will be flipping uh, that switch that way. Now, let's go right over here. This main piece right here is a drive that actually has another motor down here that actually moves this in and out. So when we set this up on the rotor, we will flip this lever and it will actually move this uh, piece back to actually machine the rotor, okay? So that's, that's the two things we'll be using tonight. I'll make another video on how to machine a drum. Um, this is your main body piece for cutting rotors here. If you notice, there's a wrench here. This is adjustable. You can take this loose. You can slide it in and out if you need to, to depending on what kind of drum you have, and in and out. Right now, we'll leave that slightly loose. Um, we'll take a look over here right quick. Um, I just put some brand new bit holders in here because the ones that were with this brake lathe that are kind of beat up from people over tightening the nuts um, or these bolts here over the years. So I put a brand new set in here. Got some brand new bits on here as well. Now, the adjustments here, these are the locking uh, bolts here. We'll go ahead and loosen both of them. And right here on the side, if you'll notice, um, this is the adjustment where if I want to bring these in or out, and I will show you in just a moment how, how we will use that when machining the rotor. So the next thing let's do, let's go ahead and, uh, this is our rotor that we're going to machine tonight. And one thing I've already done is I took a, a ziz wheel and I kind of, kind of cleaned all the rust off of this surface and off of the surface on the inside so that our um, tools that we use to mount this will fit nice and flush and we'll get a true um, cut on our rotor. So this is what we call a floating rotor in the automotive business. And so we're going to use these two cones right here. I'm going to reach over here and we'll grab this cone and go ahead and put it on the lathe. And I'm going to grab its mate right here and we'll use that. Now the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and put our spring onto here and then we want to find one of these tapered cones that actually fits this rotor, okay? It looks like it's going to be this one right here. So we will stick it onto the lathe just like so up against the spring and then we will put our rotor into place. We'll take our other cone and we will slide this up and I always like to kind of twist these a little bit in case there's any dirt or debris on your tool or still on the rotor. Kind of knocks that out of the way. And now we will use one of our other cones here as a spacer. And then we have this little spacer here to go on here. And then we have our locking nut. Okay. So we'll go ahead and Tighten that down. Now, here's where some mechanics make a mistake. They put the wrench on there and then they beat it with their hand. Or actually, if you look at this wrench right here, it looks like it's been smacked with a hammer several times over the years, but that's not necessary. All you need to do, put your body weight on here, just like that right there. Just the torque that it takes you to tighten that nut to where to turn the motor over is as tight as that nut needs to be. <clears throat> okay. Next thing we'll do is we'll take this vibration band here and we'll go ahead and wrap it around the vents of this rotor. And all you have to do is simply pull it and lock it around the little piece of metal here. There's uh, several different areas on there to where it stays on there nice and secure. Okay, folks. Hey, it's about time to start cutting the rotor now. Um, before I do that, I want to show you something. Ideally, you want to where you'll have the least amount of vibration. You want things set up as close as you can. So you would want to make, you want to move this in as far as you can 
to where you would uh, still have adjustment. I mean, you don't want this like way out here. You don't want this back so far back this way that this um, tool here is out here at its very edge. You'll see that has a lot of uh, subject to vibration there. Same thing with your bit holders. You wouldn't want to uh, loosen these. I'll just demonstrate one time. You wouldn't want to loosen these and have these sticking way out there and then backing this nut all the way off because that's another thing that's subject to a lot of vibration. So when you set up a lathe, I'm gonna go ahead and move this back right quick and snug it down. And you don't have to kill it. You just wanna kind of snug it down. Um, you wanna be keeping that type of stuff in mind, okay? Same thing with this bar here. You don't want this like way back here to where this slot is really open. You wanna to try to get things tightened up as far as you can depending on the rotor. Now some rotors that you have on here might have a really funny offset and you just, you know, you gotta make adjustments here to, to, it may stick way out here, if you see what I mean. But anyway, I hope you understand and follow what I'm trying to say. So we're gonna go ahead and move this on in as far as we can here. And we'll go ahead and lock our nut down. And get that nice and snug. And we're going to take a quick look at our bits, make sure they're not touching the rotor at this time. And they're not. Okay. So we're ready. At this point right here, friends, we're ready to go ahead and flip the um, switch over here into the rotor position. Okay, we're going to go ahead and flip this lathe on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring this bit in to where it touches the rotor. Okay? And we've already screwed this... Um, mechanism here down to where we're past halfway so we're going to screw this down until we touch the rotor so we're going to leave the camera rolling and just come right around here and we're going to touch the bit on the other side with this adjustment right here i'll move the light a little bit and we can see that this and we've made contact with the inside of the rotor as well Okay. All right, from this point, I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in. Until I get as deep as I need to be on this rotor. And sometimes when you get past the point of um, where the pad has ridden before, you'll have more material. And you can hear it sounds like it cuts a little harder. And we'll go ahead and run this in all the way. And we're clear on the uh, outside of the rotor and on the inside as well, okay? All right, from this point, we're gonna bring the camera right over here. And we can see that we have a, um, a scale marked off in thousandths of an inch. And we, and we went ahead and zeroed it over to zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and take about a four thousandths of an inch cut, okay? So I moved that four marks, and I'm gonna lock this thumb nut down. Same thing on this side as well. Actually, I'm not gonna worry about zero on it. I'm just gonna move it on one of the marks here. Move it in four thousandths of an inch, lock it down. And then right over here, we're gonna flip this lever and this thing is going to automatically feed. So we'll pause the video for a moment as this thing is cutting. Okay friends, as you can see, uh, it's making a nice machine surface. It's about halfway through. So we've got a few more minutes to wait. I'll bring it right here and show the other side as well. As you see, it does look like it's going to clean up with one cut. So we'll let you know what it looks like when it's done. Okay, friends, it's about done. A few more revolutions here on the inside edge, and we'll be totally done. You can still hear the bit cutting. Looks like these things turned up very nicely. And I'm done there. Okay, there we go. 
And from this point, I come back over here to my lever that I flip. I'll go ahead and flip it back. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this on back a little bit further. Give me a little bit of clearance, okay? Now I'll reach over here and cut my lathe off for just a moment. Now, let's talk about, let's take a look at this finish on here. And it looks nice. We had a brand new bit on there. That's a nice finish on there. But for a brake job, actually what you want is a directional swirl finish, okay? Because if you think about it, that bit going across there, although this is nice and smooth, it gives it kind of that record player effect, especially if it was a worn bit. And when your pads, when you put your new pads on and this back on the car, you'll actually, you can get a little bit of pad slap until this rotor breaks in because it kind of has that record player effect and it can like pull that pad back and forth. So what, what we do in the field to compensate for that is what we call a directional swirl finish. And I'll take this piece of sandpaper here and I'm gonna reach over here and flip this lathe back on. Okay, I'm gonna take the sandpaper block here and what I'm gonna do is just hold it up against the rotor and kind of move it back and forth a little bit. And usually about 80 grit is about the perfect grit sandpaper to do this with. I'm not exactly sure what this sanding block is. And do the same thing on the inside. And now you've already put your directional swirl finish on. So the rotor is basically ready to put back on the car. Okay, folks, I decided I'm going to go ahead and just show you removing the rotor. So we'll take our band off of there. Take your uh, wrench here and you'll go in a clockwise motion and you can just tap it with your hand a little bit and you can take your nut off of here and your cone and spacer we'll set them right back up here so they'll be ready to go next time we'll set this cone here for a moment and friends here's our rotor it looks nice it's ready to go now one thing i would recommend um before putting a freshly machined rotor back on your car is to actually wash this with soap and water and blow it off. And that will help demagnetize this rotor and get all the fine dust off of it so that doesn't embed into your brand new brake pads. Friend? Okay friends, I hope you enjoyed our little video today on how to operate a brake lathe and machine a rotor. Uh, don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our channel, tell a couple friends about us, and we will see you next time. Take care.